Okay, welcome everyone. I'm going to talk today about the admin UX study that I've been working on and hopefully uh, talk a little bit as well about what content editors want. Drupal content editors, that is. Just to introduce myself, my name is Su Suzanne Dargachova, and I work at Evolving Web. We're a, a Drupal agency up in Montreal. And I do lots of Drupal things. I've been working with Drupal for about 12 years now. This is my 21st DrupalCon. Um, I, I go around teaching teams of people how to use Drupal, and I'm on the board of the Drupal Association. Uh, and I'm going to talk to you today about some of the fun stuff I've been doing with uh, Drupal in terms of UX. So it's a passion project for me. Um, obligatory promo, uh, I work at an awesome web agency, Evolving Web. If you like Canada, you want to work with us. <laughs> Um, we're always looking for, for folks to work with. And uh, yeah, just let me know. So about a year ago, I was, uh, of course, down in, at DrupalCon Nashville and talking to some, some people working on new designs for the admin UI and talking to some other folks in the Drupal community who are really passionate about UX and doing UX research. And it seemed like we should put these things together. Um, and so um, we decided, okay, we should, do some, we should do some work here. We should launch a UX study for the Drupal admin UI. We should actually do user, user research and, and user uh, testing to see how content editors and other administrators are using Drupal and, and put that to, to good use since a new admin UI was in the works for, for Drupal 8. And a lot of you probably heard about this admin UI initiative, right? You've been hearing about this, this thing coming down the line. Um, uh, very exciting. So, um, so we decided we had to do something. We have to do some kind of a study. Um, but when you're doing UX, it's, it's, uh, it's important to ask the right questions. So uh, it's one thing to just go out there and do all the research. You, know, you can get really excited about about user experience. And for those of you who have done user experience work before, you'll know that there's lots of techniques that you can use. You can go and do surveys, you can do card sorts, you can get people to scribble things on, on um, sticky notes and put them up on walls. Um, you can go and actually test users and watch them. Um, you can gather data in all kinds of ways. Um, but before you start, you should really uh, ask some questions about what problems you're trying to solve. Um, and I'd like to say that we did this perfectly and we asked all the right questions. Um, we, I don't think we did the first time we necessarily met, but um, this is sort of the, what, what we've gathered over the last, uh, over the last year. So uh, in starting out a UX project, like ideally at the beginning, you start to ask, you know, what are the business goals we're trying to solve and what do the users, what do the users want and what's the overlap between the two? And then how can we cre create great experiences that are strategic and actually um, make users happy and, and achieve the goals? So it's, it's interesting with Drupal, because of course Drupal's an open source project, and we usually think about business goals as being like business goals, like goals that businesses have. But Drupal has business goals as well, right? So, so one of the first questions to ask is kind of like, what are, what are we trying to achieve with Drupal? What are we trying to facilitate? Like, What's the point of making a better admin UI? Like, why, why do we even want that? Um, and there's lots of reasons, of course, because Drupal's used for lots of things. And, uh, and so, you know, you might want a better admin UI for Drupal. You might want Drupal to look better when you log in and, and edit content, just because you want someone to select Drupal. So some of you, maybe hands up if you've ever created a demo for or you ever had to do a client demo, or you've ever showed somebody the Drupal admin UI, like, hey, look, this is this Drupal thing I'm working on. This is what it looks like to edit a node, right? So sometimes you're trying to convince some, someone that Drupal's great, and then you, you're showing them the admin UI, and you just want to impress them. Um, and I know sometimes I've done this, and then I kind of go in with my inspect tools and change the, <laughs> change the CSS or hide things to make it look, to make it look nicer just to just to take a great screenshot. Um, <laughs> come on, some of you have done this. Um, 
Sometimes you want to help organizations adopt Drupal. So this is always a big challenge, right? Some of you probably work, I know some of you work for like higher ed. Um, some of you work for large, large enterprises and you don't just have one content editor to convince. You actually want a whole team of people to edit content and you want to convince them that Drupal's great and like, oh yeah, let's, let's adopt it for more and more of our projects. So that's another, another reason, uh, another goal we're trying to achieve. Um, we want Drupal to be a genuinely good tool for editing different kinds of content, so structured content. We want it to be easy for people to go in and edit, edit content that's like traditional Drupal content, like you know news and events and courses and publications and stuff like that. And then we also want Drupal to be a good tool for editing marketing style content. So I know that, I know I've heard a lot about other content management tools out there like. WordPress and <laughs> the work they're doing to try and make it easier to create kind of marketing landing pages. Um, and so we're kind of competing with that and we want to provide great tools for, for creating, for, for marketers, for digital marketers. Um, we also want to build powerful functionality with Drupal, so we want to enable that through the admin interface. And some people are using Drupal as a content hub, right? So anyone here using Drupal as like a backend for Anyone here like want to use Drupal as a back end and build some fancy Gatsby stuff on the front end? Yeah, this is like the cool new thing. Um, so it'd be great if, if Drupal um, if, if Drupal was good at that. You know, if Drupal was a good tool as a as a back end, um, and when content editors are editing content and then it's going to be published somewhere else, it would be nice if that was an intuitive experience as well. So there's all these goals, um, and a lot of them are overlapping, um, but that's sort of what we're trying to achieve. And some of these, you know, maybe it's, maybe we need to prioritize them, right? But that's kind of where we're headed. At the same time, users have goals too. So we're trying to build, build Drupal for, for users, but there's not just one user. So I'm kind of talking about content editors and I've already said that that's, that's kind of the, the target here. But there's all kinds of other editors in Drupal, right? There's the, the content editors, but there's also site admins, people with a bit more expertise um, who are able to configure Drupal. There's developers who use the Drupal admin UI too. And then the evaluators who are maybe just um, looking at it from, um, looking at it during a demo. So different, different types of users and who are we actually building Drupal for? And I would argue that over the years of, uh, over the many years of Drupal development, most of the focus has been more on the, the developers and maybe the site admins, right? So like Drupal's a tool built by developers and a lot of developers are using it. And if, if you're thinking about the experience of the admin UI, you're kind of thinking of your own experience. And the challenge here is that the admin UI for Drupal as a developer is the exact same UI that you get as a content editor, except that as a content editor, you might have fewer permissions and uh, more restrictions on what you can do. Right, so it's a, an interface that we're really familiar with as developers that we're trying to make easier for these other, other types of users. And so that's why we decided um, as, a, as a group, as, a, as the UX study, to focus on content editors and to help them with the things that are the, the most, um, their top priority. So the, the things that they're doing, like you know, just previewing publishing content, using a content approval workflow, um, using images, reusing images, translating content, all these types of tasks. Like how can we make that experience really great and focus on the content editor's needs? Um, and this is this challenge that I'm speaking to that content editor experience has overlap with site, site administrator experience and site building and developing uh, the whole website. So, Saying that we're going to launch a UX study, like I said, there's many research techniques we can employ, um, lots, of, lots of different things we can do. We could spend years on this, right? There's, there's so, many, so many ways to gather information about what users want and, and how they're currently using Drupal. Um, so one of the easiest things to do as, as, a, as a UX research technique is to, do, is to launch a survey. And so that's a good place to start, to just gather information about how current users are, are, are using are using uh, Drupal, and we, we started with that. So we launched a survey, asked a bunch of questions just about tasks that 
tasks that users are doing, tasks that content editors are doing. And we tried to do this to figure out what users wanted, and we got back a few clear answers. And um, some of these things, like the modern UI Dries talked to this morning, um, a refresh kind of look that really modernizes the, the admin UI. That message came back loud and clear. Simplifying some of the complexity was another one. Better media management, something else that you've seen has already, already progressed a lot in the last year. Improvements to the WYSIWYG editor and things like autosave. And then another thing that came through loud and clear was that a lot of content editors found that the interface was just too complex and they needed something that was simplified. So that was the survey. We did also a card sort. Anyone here has done a card sort before? This is sort of where you figure out um, tasks that users have to do, how they logically group them together. And we did this and found that actually the way that the uh, navigation in the admin UI is currently structured really reflects how content editors are thinking about how their tasks are organized. So the result here is maybe not so interesting because it basically says, yeah, we're doing the right thing, the way we currently organize the back end of the, the, the way we currently organize the administration um, menu makes sense. So then we launched into a more in-depth, uh, some more in-depth UX techniques. Um, and we launched a comparative usability testing study. And the reason that we, we did a comparative testing um, is because it's a lot of work to, to create new wireframes. And at this time, um, there are new wireframes being developed for the new admin UI for Drupal 8. Um, and we thought, oh, we could test those wireframes. But, you know, what should the wireframes be exactly? It wasn't super well defined. And so doing a comparative study of some existing content management systems other than Drupal, kind of gathering some ideas, seemed like an easy way to um, get, get some feedback from users about things that work and things that don't work in terms of the admin UI. So uh, the setup was, was to create some uh, sample content that users could start with, an article, and run through a script of, you know, go ahead and create this content using a content management system, set up a draft, add some styling, and then um, give us your impressions. And we ran through this script using four content management systems, none of which was Drupal. So we were just looking at like, what do other content management systems, how do, they, how do they work? How do users interact with them? What are things that work well? What are things that we want to avoid? Um, and this is to inform the design process for, for Drupal. Um, so we used four, uh, Contentful, WordPress with, with Gutenberg, which you might have heard of, the um, new um, editing tool for WordPress, uh, Squarespace and Craft CMS. So all of these, we picked them because they're, they're fairly different, the UI that's provided. And so it was a, enough variety to get some, some good ideas. Um, we looked at um, content editing. So um, we've, we found some specific things. So I'll, give you, I'll give you a little bit of information about e each one, but kind of go through quickly. So um, one thing that Contentful has in the editing UI is that they don't have a WYSIWYG editor um, like we do in Drupal. There's a, um, uh, an editor for creating markdown. Um, and you, content editors did find this a little off-putting. I think some developers would, might prefer this, this interface. Um, but it, it did kind of, um, it was kind of hard for content editors to use. Um, we also noticed that the labels were really important. So for example, with, with Contentful, um, there were a couple labels on description and body fields that didn't seem to quite make sense to users. So for, for a developer, you know, you might realize that a label is just a label, but for a content editor, they were really confused by just subtle differences in, in the field, field labels. Um, and the, um, on the right here, this is um, Craft CMS. And Craft CMS has a, a UI with little buttons at the bottom for adding different kinds of components, content components to the page, kind of similar to what we have in Drupal if you install the paragraphs module. And people found this really intuitive. Um, 
we also, yeah, we also did a, we also studied how people are using Gutenberg. So you might have heard of WordPress Gutenberg. Has anyone heard of this? It got a lot of, it got a lot of press, <laughs> negative and positive. <laughs> And, and people really genuinely loved this interface. People got really excited, like, oh, you can add things and they instantly look great on the page. Um, it has this instant preview quality that I think goes over really well. But what we found was that when people were trying to achieve a certain goal, like trying to get something to look a certain way, trying to add an image in a certain place, um, you know, it, it's pretty, it's pretty um, it can be pretty limiting, actually, the, the interface. And while it looks great when you create it, the, the content editors were assuming that what looks great in this instant preview on the back end actually would, would look the same on the front end. And that's, that's just not the case. So with, with Gutenberg, you're not actually editing um, with a live preview. You're editing in an interface that makes your content look a certain way. Um, and then when you actually go to publish that content, it'll use whatever theme you have installed on the front end of your site. So while it's a great editing experience, it's not necessarily the most uh, predictable experience. So that predictability was really something that um, content editors were value, valuing. Um, I, as a, as a kind of, well, I'm, I wouldn't call myself a designer, but when I, when I have to design things, I always assume that simplicity is really important. Um, and one thing we noticed with this, this interface, this is from Squarespace, is that the interface for adding content components in Squarespace has this really simple little plus button at the bottom. You see that button, plus button way down on the lower right-hand corner? Yeah, so the content editors in our study didn't find that either. <laughs> and the fact that it doesn't have a label is kind of convenient. So one thing we are struggling with in Drupal always is like, what do we call things? Do we call things blocks? Do we call things paragraphs? Do we call things components? Do we call things sections? There's all these names for things and all the good names are taken. Um, and so I'm, I'm always like, well, why do we have to have a name? Let's just put a plus symbol. <laughs> which doesn't work so well for accessibility, and apparently it doesn't work so well just for being able to find the thing. So uh, again, labels are really important. Uh, preview is another important aspect of content editing, even in a really simple workflow. And one thing that we found that worked really well was the, C the Craft CMS interface for preview. So this is a side-by-side -side style of preview where you have a form on the left, a preview on the right, and kind of a in this case, really like an instant preview where you see what it's going to look like as you're editing. And people found this really intuitive, um, so it was definitely something that, that was uh, successful in, this, in the study. Publication workflow is a challenge. So if you're having to go and take content and draft it and get it published and maybe go through approvals and then maybe create another draft or delete content, archive it. This can be kind of complicated to communicate through, a, through a, um, an interface. And there, what I noticed in the study was that there was a lot of anxiety around it. Like content editors were always concerned in wanting to make sure that their content was actually saved. So there was concern that they were gonna lose their content and, and, um, and so getting this interface right seemed like a really important thing. And one thing we noticed is that putting all the buttons together, having kind of a single place where you can manage the status and um, update the status was important. So just that proximity was important. And um, the users in the study seem to find Word, the WordPress UI, which is the one on the right, um, uh, easier to use. So it kind of puts everything in one spot in the top right-hand corner. I'd say that one of the clearest messages we, came, we got in, the, in our research was that users love autosave, <laughs> which is something I think that has been a, an, a long-standing um, feature request in the Drupal issue queue. There is a, a node open um, for this feature, and so we definitely heard that loud and clear, confirmed that users love autosave. They love to hit save. They love to make sure their content is saved and be reassured that, yes, you know, it's not going to be lost when you're, you're clicking away. So we, we took all this data and we had some takeaways. Um, um, one, one big thing that we learned was that users were not, didn't necessarily prioritize simplicity above all else. 
Um, I think sometimes in design, we want to design the simplest thing, but these content editors, they were all experienced content editors, and they, they understood that to have more functionality and more complexity in terms of the content model, you'd need to have some more complexity in the UI. So they weren't necessarily looking for the simplest possible interface, but they wanted it to be as complex as needed for the, for the content, for the task at hand. Um, editors really like an interface that speaks to them, that has terminology that speaks to them. So the, the contentful interface, um, there were a few things about it that were pretty technical, like some technical language when the users were first logging in, and that definitely was something that caused anxiety. So um, having just some cues in there that this interface is designed for content editors um, really made a big difference. Um, editors do want to be able to see and edit HTML. This is what they want as a site builder. This is usually like what I do not want. <laughs> so I'd say maybe this is a little bit at odds with, uh, with business goals in some cases, but just that was something that a lot of them brought up and kind of assuming that in with the, um, particularly with the WordPress editor, a lot of content editors said they assumed they would be able to edit the HTML, which kind of got my heart racing a bit. Um, editors want to know the status of their content. They want to be reassured that they, that they know that content is saved and they know if it's published or not. And that, that totally makes sense. Maybe it's kind of obvious, but it's a big priority for them. So this was one, one study we did and we kind of had some takeaways. We had kind of some takeaways from that. And one of the takeaways was that we should design a content editor role, that this would enable us to design an interface that worked a little bit better for content editors and also encourage site builders to design for the content editor, right? To restrict permissions for content editors so that they're not overwhelmed with too much, too, too many options. Um, and so we launched a survey uh, actually for site builders to ask what kind of content editor role they would you know, default content editor role in Drupal they would want um, and what would help them. And so we, we got some results from that and basically the results were, yes, cont a content editor role out of the box in Drupal would be great and no, a content editor shouldn't be able to do too much, just edit content. That came across loud and clear. And having some kind of content manager role, we had ambiguous results. So as a first step, we're kind of suggesting that content editor role is sufficient. Um, so what's, what's next? There's some short-term improvements that kind of came out of the, the, the study so far. Um, uh, creating the content editor role, setting up autosave, a few other, a few other um, smaller things, and then one big thing, modernizing the admin UI, <laughs> which you heard about this morning. Um, and this is exciting because it's, it's a project that's underway that Christina, who's in the crowd there, has been hard at work at with some other uh, designers in the community. And so there's a design um, actually built out, quite built out, and that's been in the process of you know, transforming Seven into a new theme called Claro. So this is very exciting that this is actually underway. So but there's some other, there's some other next steps. So other next steps is uh, kind of defining a little bit more what kind of problem we want to solve in terms of content editing UI. Like are we building a content editing UI that's supposed to be best for structured content or more flexible kind of landing page style content or both? Um, and so one of my next steps as part of the, the UX study is doing a second stage of comparative testing, looking more at creating um, content beyond just articles, but actually, you know, how do how would a content editor create a landing page? And kind of running through a similar process, comparing other content management systems, but also Drupal. So also looking like how do how would someone create this with the the layout builder, or how would someone create this with paragraphs? And what works what works best, and what can we learn from that? Um, there's also some admin UI wireframes, which I'll just show very, very briefly. <laughs> so um, there will eventually be a, a more redesigned admin UI for Drupal 8 that goes beyond just refreshing the look and feel and actually change the UX. So that's another project in the future. 
There's work to be done also for, for, to improve the UX for um, site admins and site builders and developers, so going beyond just what content editors can do, like how can we make um, the experience better for other types of users? And I already have lots of ideas about that, um, but user testing has not, has not been done. So some takeaways. Um, We've done a bunch of research now. It's been a, it's been a year. <laughs> um, we did some studies. We did some user testing. And um, doing both was really valuable. So it's really valuable to have data. I think a lot of people in the Drupal community, you know, they're developers. They love looking at results. Um, but doing the qualitative research and getting that feedback from actual users, watching them use, use um, content management systems, watching them use Drupal, this is really valuable. Um, and in terms of improving the UX of an open source project, I think we can look a lot at the, um, I think we can get a lot done by making iterative improvements. So just saying, oh, we have to redesign the whole thing, the whole experience, this is hard to get done in an open source community where you have to rally volunteers to, to do things. Um, so iterative solutions making um, small improvements like adding a content editor role this seems like it's going to be easier to, to get done. So these improvements or these suggestions are um, kind of easier to pass on to, to teams who are actually going to implement the changes. OK, so I know you're all excited now. I showed you a bunch of UX study stuff. And some of you are like, really want to get into UX and you want to help out. I can just tell. I can sense the energy in the room. Nervous laughter, yes, <laughs> talking to you. I'm talking to you. So if you want to get involved, this is a great way to get involved if you're not necessarily someone who wants to learn how to write code or, um, or contribute in that way. If you want to contribute by running usability tests or by participating in a test, um, we have ways for you to get involved. So this Friday at the Contribution Sprint, we're going to be working on some testing and running some tests. So if you'd like to get involved, there's going to be a, an admin UI table there. I, I hope there's like a couple tables, actually. Um, and we're going to be running some testing. So there's a, a survey link you can sign up for there, the bit.ly link, um, to participate in testing, either on Friday or later on um, via video conference. And we do have a Slack channel on the Drupal Slack admin UI, and we have meetings on Wednesdays. And you can get involved doing working on the UX testing, um, but also as a front-end developer, because the Claro project is looking for front-end developers. Um, so if that's your thing, then please, please, please get in touch with us. Oh, yes, and thank you to Christina, who's here, and Antonella um, for helping with this project, and to all of you future um, um, contributors who are going to help out. <laughs> um, I have an obligatory slide in here to promote some trainings I'm doing, but I'm going to skip that. And um, you should evaluate this session on go by going to that link. So thank you all for, for coming today. And I think I have 90, I have 90, sec 90 seconds left for quick Questions, people who are quick on their feet or who have comments? Anyone? Anyone? Yes, come up to the mic. <laughs> This may not be a 90 second question, but just wondering, how do you account for the fact that the experience of a content editor with Drupal depends so heavily on the builder and the admin of the site and how they've structured their Absolutely. content Absolutely, yeah, so part of the challenge is providing the right tools for site builders to create, like encouraging them to create experience, a better experience for content editors. It's definitely part of the challenge. and. Um, so that, that goes along with like if the now that layout builders in in core and you know how, how can we make sure that that experience is good because it is a core thing um, and then also if people start people are obviously using paragraphs for everything so how do you make that interface maybe better? <laughs> Thank you. Those are just some ideas. Yeah. 
Um, kind of building on that question, uh, do you have any resources you would recommend to give to developers that are working on building the interface like that, so they can make more? I have decisions? a whole, I have a whole slide deck. I can, I'm going to send you. There's uh, so many things you can do um, <laughs> to to test. Uh, but basically, yeah, creating good good labels for all of your content types and your fields is a good place to start. Um, limiting permissions that content editors have, actually testing, just taking the time to test yourself in a simple way, watching, like as you're doing training for site editors, watching them, um, and then making adjustments based on what they do. Um, there's a lot of modules you can add to provide like better widgets and things for certain types of fields. Um, um, the list, the uh, list could go on. <laughs> Thank you.